Welcome to this episode of our program Daily Debate and today's debate is very special. Today um, um, the BRICS has uh, invited or uh, decided to expand its membership by inviting Egypt, uh, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Argentina, Iran and Ethiopia to uh, join the uh, group starting 2024. Today is uh, a real very particular day for Egypt. Joining the BRICS is something very uh, uh, important and very particular for Egypt. And uh, right after the declaration of the BRICS, President Abdel Fattah Sisi issued a statement and said, I value the declaration by the BRICS group to invite Egypt to join its membership. Uh, as of January 2024, we appreciate the confidence of all BRICS member states with whom we share robust relations. We look forward to cooperating and coordinating with them and with the other countries invites, uh, 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 invited to join the bloc to achieve its goals towards strengthening economic cooperation among us and raise the voice of the Global South with regard to the various issues and development challenges we uh, encounter in order to uh, promote the developing countries' rights and interests. These were the statements by uh, the President right after the declaration of the bloc. Of course, this step is, uh, is a very uh, important step and will transform the group into a, a bloc that holds control over uh, about a third of the global uh, economy and that is according of course to the world's uh, bank estimation however egypt uh, representing a number of economic african blocks most probably the percentage would very much exceed that uh, percentage uh, BRICS plus or under the title of the uh, BRICS and africa a partnership for accelerated growth, sustainable development, and inclusive multilateral action. This is what we are uh, will be discussing tonight in our uh, episode. Before we delve into our discussion, let's first have this quick report. And Prime Minister Dr. Manbouli addresses the BRICS in a speech on behalf of President Abdel Fattah Sisi. Let's watch. Prime Minister Mustafa Mabouli participated in BRICS summit on Thursday on behalf of President Sisi, delivering Egypt's speech in a high-level dialogue session on Africa's cooperation with BRICS. Mabouli said Egypt is looking forward to be an active and effective member at BRICS and enhancing cooperation with other members in various domains at the bilateral and multilateral levels. He further said Egypt welcomes all initiatives and projects aimed at achieving joint interests in addition to building sustainable partnership. The Prime Minister referred to Egypt's keenness to enhance its ties with the BRICS group during the past few years. Premier Mabouli said Egypt calls for adopting peaceful and diplomatic policies in solving international crises. He praised the step by BRICS to expand its members, saying the move would contribute in making the bloc more active and capable to express its visions at the international level. The Prime Minister reviewed Egypt's vision in all domains in regard with frameworks of cooperation between developing nations and the BRICS in the coming stage, which calls for intensifying regional and international efforts and coordination to confront the food crisis and its repercussions. In this regard, Madbouli stressed that efforts should be made to afford food needs for developing countries, expressing Egypt's readiness to host an international center for storing grains. He thanked South African President Cyril Ramaphosa for hosting the session in this unprecedented circumstances in which the world was passing through that resulted in unprecedented complications which have negative impacts on developing nations' economies. On the sidelines of the summit, Premier Medbouli held talks with a number of international firms' representatives. Right, welcome uh, back and uh, to discuss the issue we have with us, uh, Dr. Mohamed Rushdi, uh, economic banking expert and lecturer at Cairo University. And thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much. Good evening for you and our audience. Thank you so much. And uh, as uh, we just said, the BRICS uh, has extended its membership and has invited Egypt 
uh, along with Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates and other two countries to join the bloc and that in itself is a very remarkable step for Egypt. As Egypt uh, does not just represent uh, itself, it represents a, uh, a number of uh, African blocs, um, definitely along with South uh, Africa, but joining the BRICS, which already is um, around 31% of the world's uh, economy. Yes. How does that uh, seem to look in the future of, of all the bloc from one side and for Egypt on the other? Uh, actually, I would like to start with a famous quote for uh, the British American uh, economist, uh, which is Angus Ditton, uh, who got the Nobel Prize in 2015, as far as I recall. International cooperation is vital to keeping our global safe. Uh, commerce flowing and our planet habitable. Actually, uh, BRICS, uh, let me quote you, they are contributing 31% uh, from the third, uh, of, yeah, the world, uh, the third uh, oh. of the economy. And actually, in terms of total population, actually the same. And if we compare BRICS uh, with the G7, for example, mm. they are contributing, uh, as far as I recall, 30%. 30.7%. So bill. let's here make a little bit of calculations. The World Bank said that uh, Egypt plus the five countries would contribute by 3.1 uh, trillion dollars, uh, I guess. Uh, and the bloc, uh, the five uh, member uh, members of the bloc contribute by 26 uh, trillion dollars. That makes 30. Yes. Indeed, 30 trillion dollars. Third. So you can imagine how this will make a difference and they have a lot of things and when they are inv uh, inviting a lot of emerging countries mm. uh, like uh, Egypt, uh, Saudi Arabia and a lot on the other United Arab Emirates. Yes, they are the six countries. Argentina, Argentina uh, Iran, Ethiopia. And Ethiopia. Yeah. Yes. Those countries this is a post of signals for them that those are the potential countries in terms of economy and they have a, uh, they have a vision and they will contribute in the global economy with effectiveness and efficiency. Just in a, in a nutshell, we can see the GDP growth for them, which is, uh, for example, if we started with Egypt, the GDP growth is 3.9% in 2022, as far as I recall, which is, this is, is a good signal that we are on the right track, Egypt is on the right track, and selecting it, which is a positive signal that we are on the right, tra on the right track on the economic level, on the political level, and we have a greater stability. If we compared our GDP growth to one of the developed countries like USA, uh, in 2022, as far as I recall, they achieved around 2.06% as in GDP growth and we are 3.9%. And this is, will make a difference, I believe, this, the BRICS mm. and the eventing those six countries uh, will reshape the economy, the global economy. And I believe that one of the recommendations is how to uh, collaborate together uh, without depending on uh, US dollar. And this will help to bring more FDI for a lot of emerging countries and uh, will be a good window for trade. Mm. You, s you just pointed your finger on a very important issue which has been said by the Russian uh, president, the dominance of the dollar and trying to break out of such a dominance to facilitate issues for uh, not just the South uh, countries but also the whole world because the domination of the dollar has created very problematic issues for many countries. Mm -hmm. How do you view the ability of uh, such a bloc to do that, get out of such a domination? Actually, you, saw, you, you said that I just point a finger. You, I, I believe that you hit a nerve, actually, when we are talking about uh, changing 
uh, or reshaping the global economy that depends mainly on uh, dollar, actually, and get or, or decrease uh, trading, the decreasing volume to use the local currencies for the BRICS. Uh, or the gold. Or the gold. They have a lot of uh, initiatives or they are discussing a lot of points one of them the goal one of them to use a local currency and the third one which is to have a unified currency for the BRICS mm. and those are I believe but it will have a lot of uh, challenges like they should have uh, central bank unified central bank and unified uh, uh, and unified currency actually and they have to do a great union this is why I don't think that they brought about the issue of uh, a new currency uh, 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 this uh, time. But I guess they spoke about uh, the cover of the gold and uh, trading with the uh, with the local, currency. with the the local, local currencies currency. of each country. Indeed, indeed. Um, let me here assess the or, or please assess the relations between Egypt and the founding members of the uh, uh, of the BRICS? Uh, actually to uh, uh, the message that I believe that uh, we are transferring to the entire world that when the BRICS uh, the, as you uh, let me quote you they are contributing around 3rd percent from the GDP the global GDP actually they are inv inviting Egypt to uh, join them this is mean that we are on the right track in terms of development and this will help us to bring more FDI and will decrease the deficit of the balance of payment in addition to that we will count on another currencies and as you know nowadays the, the government and the central bank of Egypt is trying to diversify the, our reserve from part of it, gold, uh, dollar, euros, and a lot of currencies, uh, yuan, a lot of currencies. And nowadays, by this, we can trade and little bit use our local currency and other currencies to get the most important goods that help us in, man in uh, our manufacturing and in addition to and a lot of industries. As you know, a lot of our industries, they have external uh, components and if we used the local currencies for the BRICS and there's an agreement, trade agreement between them or strategic alliance between them, this will let our country to be one of the most important and developing countries in the in near future and this was, is aligned with 2030 our uh, 2030 uh, vision, vision, Egypt's vision, to sustainable have a sustainable uh, economy and sustainable environment, and this is, this is, I believe, it's a positive signal for everyone to come Egypt and to invest, and we have a strategic vision nowadays, in addition to a lot of mega projects that facilitate any investor to come to Egypt. Yes, indeed, it opens horizons of uh, of opportunities for Egypt, and it's a it's a win-win situation. Before I go to, uh, I mean here, uh, I just wanted to pinpoint my finger on the Egyptian relations with the member states of the bloc. And when I speak about the member states, we're speaking here about China, the second economy in the world, Russia, one of the biggest economies, and uh, 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 a big uh, uh, power. We're speaking about India a giant yeah. uh, economy nowadays. We're speaking about uh, South Africa. Uh, 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 it goes between Egypt, uh, South Africa and Nigeria every time who's the, 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 the richest. And we're speaking uh, uh, about, uh, 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 so it's uh, China. Brazil. <laughs> Brazil, indeed, Brazil. And it's also, uh, on top of the hill, hopefully, because Brazil has been into some shaking economy in the past uh, in the past few years, but it has been they on are recovering. Yes, nowadays. indeed, indeed. Now, if I may here ask about how do you assess the Egyptian relations with the member states of the BRICS? 
I believe they has a strategic uh, relationship and partnership. If we, for example, if we started with Russia, we have a historical, uh, we have a historical uh, strategic relationship, uh, and there's a lot of uh, cooperation uh, between us and them in terms of. Uh, political in terms of uh, mm. economy in addition to China we have a lot of trade uh, of trade agreements with them uh, in addition to if we can you can see easily India we have a lot of uh, agreements in terms of technology especially the uh, soft uh, the software and the programming part because nowadays as you know and our audience our world will be changed to the digital era. We have a strategic partnership and they have a competitive edge on this. I believe those five countries, each one of them, they have a, uh, a competitive edge. Mm. And if they cooperate together, they will take the entire world to other era. Indeed. Indeed. Before we go on and read into the Prime Minister uh, uh, statements that uh, in which he addressed the BRICS uh, today, let me here take the second report and the Egypt's BRICS uh, states relations and cooperation. Let's watch. The Central Agency for Public Mobilization and Statistics CAPMAS announced that trade exchange between Egypt and BRICS countries increased to $31.2 billion in 2022 compared to $28.3 billion in 2021, a growth of 10.5%. The BRICS countries are Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. The agency said that the value of Egyptian exports to BRICS countries increased to $4.9 billion in 2022 compared to $4.6 billion in 2021, an increase of 5.3%, while the value of Egyptian imports from BRICS countries amounted to $26.4 billion compared to $23. $6 billion, an increase of 11.5%. According to the agency, India came at the top of the list of the highest BRICS countries importing from Egypt during the year 2022. The value of Egypt's exports amounted to $1.9 billion, while China came second with $1.8 billion, then Russia with $595.1 million, then Brazil with $402.1 million, and finally South Africa with $118.1 million. This comes as China topped the list of the highest exporting BRICS countries to Egypt during the year 2022, where the value of Egypt's imports amounted to $14.4 billion, while Russia came second with $4.1 billion, then India with $4.1 million, then Brazil, and finally South Africa. It explained that investments of BRICS countries in Egypt amounted to $891.2 million during the fiscal year 2021, 2022. China ranked first in the list of the highest investment countries of BRICS groups in Egypt during the fiscal year 2021-2022 at the value of investments amounted to $369.4 million. In the same context, the agency revealed that the value of remittances of Egyptians working in the BRICS countries reached $84.7 million during the fiscal year 2020. 2022 compared to 41.8 during the fiscal year 2020-2021, an increase of 102.5 percent, while remittances of workers from the BRICS countries reached in Egypt, it amounted to $49.7 million compared to $54.5 million, a decrease of 8.7 percent. Brazil came at the top of the list of the highest BRICS countries in remittances from Egyptians working in it during the fiscal year 2021-2022 with a value of $42.4 million. Russia came second with $16.4 million, then China and South Africa and finally India with $6 million. Right, welcome back and uh, back to you, Dr. Rudy. And um, uh, today, the Prime Minister has uh, uh, addressed the uh, the, uh, the session or, uh, of the BRICS or the official session of the BRICS, and uh, he uh, 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 gave uh, a speech on behalf of President Abdel Fattah in which he spoke about three very important issues. The first was um, how uh, to strengthen economic cooperation among 
the uh, the bloc and the uh, in invited countries or the new members. Uh, the second is how to raise the voice of the, the global south uh, with regard to uh, the various issues and the developing challenges which have uh, all to be met. Uh, mm. How do you read the, 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 the Prime Minister's statements today or, or this, uh, the, the, the statements he read on behalf of President of Fatah Sisi? I believe if we started with the first point in terms of, of how can we cooperate with them and the competitive edge and how we can add the six new members, how can they add to the BRICS, this is one of the most important, I believe it, the crucial thing. Actually, one of, in my humble opinion, that every one in terms of human beings has uh, his own competitive edge or fingerprint it's kind of competitive edge i believe so each country if you apply this on each country each country has its competitive edge for example if we are ta if we are talking about egypt we have the manpower we have a lot of uh, we have the location. The location, uh, the yeah, beginning. thank you. We're just the gate to Africa. Yeah, it's, I believe this is one of the most important things. It's, it's good, good actually for Egypt, uh, which one of the most important things. We uh, have all the infra infrastructure. And nowadays, actually, the presidential leadership is taking care of the infrastructure and trying to uh, do a lot of mega projects that facilitate uh, bringing FDI and doing a lot of uh, projects and this is one of the most important things and this is for Egypt and you can see uh, uh, Saudi Arabia also but, they have but, a but before we go to uh, Saudi Arabia uh, we're just speaking about the economic weight and we're not speaking about the political weight because uh, Egypt is a regional power a yes. true regional power Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the economic economy. Yeah, <laughs> this Continue. is in addition for sure, the Definitely. political part and the, everyone know that well. Uh, I'm talking about especially the economic part. Mm. We have a competitive edge in terms of the manpower, in terms of the location, uh, in yes. addition to uh, one of the most important countries like Saudi Arabia, for example. Mm. They, have the, they are one of the most important countries mm. that uh, produce oil actually and uh, an, an up the, member yeah for, for example if we took on just two countries like Egypt and Saudi Arabia United and, Arab Emirates yes a lot if we took one, each one separately and but we don't have I believe time for that no. but I, I, I was trying to give an example for Egypt and Saudi Arabia actually those two countries, what's, what's happening? Each one of them, they have a competitive edge. They will add a lot for the BRICS. This, is w this will help the BRICS to increase the contribution in terms of the contribution in terms of the economy or the GD to the GDP. In, uh, I believe in, in a state of 30 percent, actually, or 31 percent, they will reach more or less to 40, 50 percent in coming, uh, I believe that. This um, we're speaking uh, about 11 countries. Yes. So 40 yeah. percent would, uh, would be something very important. And, and we're speaking here about 196 countries, so we're speaking only about 11. 11 And they are already the third, uh, a third of the, the world economy. In a nutshell, I would like to highlight uh, one of the most important things, which a good indicator for how they how can they add for the economy for the BRICS you can see Egypt one of the most important countries our GDP growth was three in 2022 3.9 percent uh, in addition to one of the most important things uh, China which is uh, 2.9 uh, India 9 percent can you see United Arab Emirates 7.9 percent GDP growth in addition to if we compare this to one of the most uh, developed countries like uh, USA 2 percent yeah. uh, France 2.6 percent those numbers or figures can highlight they are highlighting how the the, the new 
BRICS uh, collaboration will lead uh, the global into another into another way and they will support the global economy mm -hmm. and they will act to each other in a great way this one this is for the first point uh, for the second point uh, could you please just uh, call uh, the second point to uh, for the speech of the prime, uh, prime uh, minister the uh, 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 voicing out or raising the voice of the global south and uh, uh, definitely in in various issues and the developing challenges so thank you for especially <coughs> for the african part uh, as you know and our audience they are the globe is counting on africa they are calling our continent actually the youth continent and there's no uh, um, in terms of presenting or presenting africa only south africa actually and there is no other country representing africa one of the most uh, booming economies we're speaking about south africa yes egypt egypt and now ethiopia ethiopia yes okay but uh, uh, we're speaking about particularly egypt and uh, uh, south africa because for an instant this year Egypt is uh, the, chair, uh, the chair of the NEPAD. Yes. And it's in, uh, in, in almost all the uh, uh, African economic blocks. Yes. And during the presidency of, the, uh, uh, of Egypt to the African Union, we were able to ratify the, 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 uh, the African Free Trade Agreement. Yes. For this, you can uh, 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 metaphorically you are highlighting that how Egypt is a great influencer in terms uh, for Africa, and they will lead the, nowadays. They are leading the African continent in another direction, mm -hmm. and this is a most the most important thing that the North, one of the most important countries like Africa. Uh, like Egypt and uh, South Africa, in addition to Ethiopia, those countries will are, will boom, and they have they are calling them like tiger competitors, tiger economies. Like you know that when tiger is running, metaphorically, when tiger is running and mm. trying to catch something, they are running fastly. The developing challenges, because um, we're running out of time, and uh, I have only two minutes. <laughs> okay, the last thing which is the developing challenges which Nowadays, is the most important the most important things and i believe the one of the most important things which is the global inflation wave nowadays this is one of the most important mm. things because you can see easily that on all countries a lot of commodities they are quite expensive and uh, one of the most important things actually we are depending a little bit on a lot of uh, European and uh, United States and our industry. If this collaboration go on the right track, what we will do, we will have one of the most important things that we will collaborate together to have a free trade agreement to integrate and we'll have a commodity with price, with reasonable price and we'll overcome the global inflation uh, wave in addition to the new direction for depending on the local currencies for each country will make a difference on the globe. Imagine, imagine if we uh, as Africa and we as part now of the BRICS hopefully by January 2024 would all sign a free trade agreement all together. Remains to be seen. This yeah. is a hope. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so Dr. Mohamed Rushdi, economic banking expert and lecturer at Cairo University. Thank you so much for being with us tonight and for your input. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. You. And uh, dear viewers, um, it's a great uh, day, I guess, and uh, hopefully the coming will be even better. And uh, that brings us to the end of this uh, episode. Many thanks for watching and good night.